Hey, how'd everybody get in my room? We got to let it breathe just for a second here. Hang tight. Got to bring on Facebook. Let her breathe, baby, just for a moment or two. And we're going to fire off a fresh episode of the Huddle Up podcast, which it is, boys and girls. I'm your host, Chad Jensen, with me, my fellow football priest, who you know, who you love, Zach Kelberman. Zach, you know, we heard a few words from Clint Kubiak upon being hired, but today Broncos TV released a little uh, sit down with Kubiak, and he said some interesting things. Mostly it was kind of pretty straightforward, vanilla coach speak, uh, new coach, new slash old coach. Uh, But one thing I wanted to get your take on is his comments relative to Drew Locke. Now, for the first time, Zach, a coach that is new to Denver brought up Drew Locke's name, A, unprompted, B, He actually gave a little bit of an analysis. Here's what he said, quote, obviously Drew Locke has a lot of talent, so I know he's been in and out of the lineup, but I think just from evaluating him from the draft, I really like the tools that he had to work with. And then Alexis Perry uh, said, let me drill down on that a little bit. What have you seen from Locke that really impresses you? And he says, does Kubiak, again, it's early. I haven't gotten to watch everything like I would like to, but I evaluated Drew very hard coming out of the draft. It's really hard to find guys that have that type of arm strength combined with that athleticism. So he is really blessed in that regard. And then Zach, last thing, I look forward to getting to know him more and getting to work with him and us getting to build our relationship. Close quote. What does it mean to you, sir? I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's coach speak. I mean, it's February. It's uh, he's the only quarterback under contract for 2022 as of the present moment. What else is Clint Kubiak going to say? I'm sure he's watched the film of Drew Locke. He's seen him up close when the Vikings and Broncos played each other. He saw Drew Locke complete that 80-yard touchdown bomb to K.J. Hamler in the preseason. That should have won him the job, but it didn't. That's a whole other story. Um, It is nice, though, that there is a Broncos coach under contract, like you also laid out, who's giving Locke praise, not bashing him, not taking shots at him, not ignoring the fact that it's his birthday, like Vic Fangio did. They finally have a coaching staff in place between Hackett, between Outen, and now Clint Kubiak, that if Locke were to start games for the Broncos, if that plan D were to fall into effect, at least Locke knows he has the um, the, the trust and, and the comfort level with his coaching staff. They're not against him, they're for him. I think that's big for any young player, but especially for a young quarterback. Through that same prism, let's analyze this interesting nugget that he dropped, Kubiak, about his philosophies, what to bring out in a quarterback. He referenced the quarterback's coach of the world champion Broncos, 2015 Super Bowl 50 Broncos, Greg Knapp, who unfortunately is no longer with us, RIP. What are your philosophies? Quote, here's Kubiak. There's three things that I was taught by Greg Knapp, the QB's coach here not long ago. Decision-making, timing, and accuracy are the three things you really focus on with those quarterbacks. You always try to develop those things every day in the film room, but you know a lot of it is God-given. These guys have played a lot of football over their entire career, and you try to identify through the draft who has those traits and continue to develop them. Close quote. Your thoughts? The D word, once again, develop. It's something the Broncos didn't believe in. Under the previous regime, uh, between Elway and Vic Fangio acquiring different bridge quarterbacks, including Bridgewater, the likes of Joe Flacco and Case Keenum, they didn't believe in the last half decade for rolling with the ups and downs and the punches that goes along with the young quarterback, even one as erratic as Drew Locke. Maybe this coaching staff is different. Maybe this coaching staff, they're all a little younger. They're all in the year 2022 in terms of NFL play calling and mindset. And they realize that Locke is, to an extent, a dual threat ability. We all know about his arm, but he has pretty decent athleticism in the pocket. He has great es- escape ability. He's gotten out a lot of sacks. People don't you know, like to remark on that, but it's true. So at least, again, if they don't get Aaron Rodgers, if they don't get an upgraded quarterback, no doubt, slam dunk, and you have to fall back on starting Drew Locke this coming season, at least these coaches in place feel like they can maximize his abilities. It's refreshing. It is. It is. And by the way, shout out to Lance Sanderson for uh, doing the, the work to transcribe the Clint Kubiak quotes for us. He's got an article on this very subject coming. 
that'll be publishing right after the podcast. So stay tuned for that. But one last thing, Zach, I want to get your take on. Lots to talk about tonight, by the way. Multiple topics we're going to get into. Um, but Kubiak was asked, what excites you most about the AFC West and developing this passing game? He said, quote, you're right, it's extremely competitive here, and if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So this is a great place to be. You can't be scared of the competition. I think we're very fortunate to be in this pressure cooker that is the AFC West. We have a lot of work to do, and we have to start it from square one and not try to get ahead of ourselves. I just want to get to know the guys, get our scheme inserted, then go develop a really mentally tough group of quarterbacks, because remember, he's quarterbacks coach slash passing game coordinator, that can face a lot of adversity, Zach. I mean, <laughs> Drew Locke, if there's one thing he's learned in the NFL, is how to deal with adversity between CV controversies and him, his own uh, doing as well on the field, not performing up to snuff, the interceptions, the erratic play, not taking that next step forward when given the opportunity. He's faced adversity at the NFL level, and if that's something that appeals to Clint Kubiak, then he's going to uh, have a good time with Drew Locke. Hey, what's up? Uh, what 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 did I come? Double T, two T's, T twice. That's what I'm gonna call you, dude. I'm gonna call you T twice. How's that? You like that? All right. Evening, priest. Hey, it's good to see you. Appreciate you. T twice in the house. Andrew Lampy in the house as well. Hope everyone had a wonderful day. Appreciate you, big dog. The Bugmeister has come to drop a very generous super chat. Let's see what he has to say. And thank you very much for the thank support, you. my friend. Glad we finally have our new defensive coordinator. What big changes do you see happening to the defense, especially in free agency? I heard Hicks might be available. So in case you missed it, boys and girls, the Denver Broncos announced officially the hiring of three assistant coaches. Zach had the article for us at uh, milehighhuddle.com. But Ajiro Evero is officially under contract, as is the special teams coordinator, Dwayne Stooks, and then Marcus Dixon, the defensive line coach of the Rams. So all three of these cats come over, Zach, from the L.A. Rams. But what's your answers, or what are your answers, I should say, here, uh, for the Bugmeister and about Hicks as well? I, Akeem Hicks, if that's who you're talking about, I'm assuming – I, you know, I guess it'd be nice to have some veteran depth that can make plays along the uh, the front seven, but I'm a big Draymond Jones guy. I feel like the next defensive staff, including Evero and including Marcus Dixon, the new line coach, they can unlock Draymond and get him to the next level, which should be a Pro Bowl. Also, Shelby Harris fell way off the map in the, in the last year of the Fangio regime. I don't know if it's because he got the bag and kind of checked out or it wasn't a good scheme fit with Fangio. So I'm looking for more production overall from the front seven uh, uh, under Evero, and who's been given great praise, including by Akeem Tlaib. We talked about that before, Chess. He's a yeah. real up-and-coming coach, and I like the assistance he's brought under him. But I'm looking for more active defensive play. I'm looking for more game-changing plays. I'm looking for Simmons being among the highest-paid safeties, Patrick Stratan being a number nine overall pick who has all-pro upside. I want those guys to take over the ball game. I want Evero and company to do for the Broncos what Dan Quinn did for Dallas last year. They led the league in takeaways. Their defense was transformed in a single season. That's what I want to see. I want to see the big-time players making big-time plays on the Broncos' defense in the biggest moments. I hope he can bring that. What you said there about active. We need a more active defense because Vic Fangio, I'll give him his props. I mean, as an X's and O's guy, really confounding quarterbacks, that was his calling card. But unfortunately, where things kind of came together for him in San Fran and that final year in Chicago where they were not only confounding quarterbacks, but they were affecting the ball. They were taking the ball away. They were sacking the quarterback. Unfortunately, that never materialized in Denver. The stars never aligned that way, and we can try and guess and wonder and scratch at why, but it's pointless. He's gone. We're starting over. The first thing that Ejiro really, I think, has to figure out a way to maximize is exactly that, a more active defense. you got to still find a way to keep quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert and Derek Carr guessing – but get after him, man. Take him to the turf. Take the ball away. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. But I think it's pretty safe to assume the Broncos and free agency are going to be looking at um, 
couple of their own as far as deciding what to do at off-ball linebacker. They're going to look at edge rusher. They're going to look at the defensive line. And they're going to have to sign at least one corner, uh, maybe even a safety, depending on what they ultimately opt to do, replacing uh, Kareem. Sam Bam, appreciate you, big dog. Thank you. Evening, Chad and Zach. My gut feel is that if we don't trade for Aaron Rodgers, Locke will be the starter. We'll see what happens. Go Broncos. I mean, there's still a long row left to hoe, guys, in terms of the, the draft, too. All right? We don't know. All it takes is, um, you know, Justin Outen, for example, doing his research on the quarterback class and coming to Nathaniel Hackett saying, dude, I love this guy. Whoever it might be. Um, name out of a hat. Kenny Pickett, all right? Dude, I love this Kenny Pickett. Sit down and watch some film with me. Let me show you what I love. Converts Hackett. Hackett goes to George Payton and says, dude, we love <laughs> we love this Pickett kid. What can we do? Are we in position? What are you hearing? You don't know. You don't know. I mean, outside looking in, media perception, which is now matriculating to fans where you know everybody's hearing this, that it's a weak quarterback class, but there's going to be two or three quarterbacks get drafted in the first round. Will the Broncos be one of them? I doubt it at this point. I still think that if they don't get Aaron Rodgers, I'm inclined to agree with you, Sam Bam, that it's probably going to be, hey, let's uh, in a in a honeymoon year for the Hackett regime, let's see if we can go ahead and get the best out of Drew Locke and live to fight in 2023. But, hey, wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. Yeah, for however much you, you all put into uh, Mike Kliss's articles and what he's putting out, he did float on Twitter recently, I think it was yesterday, that the Broncos could have a bridge quarterback, whoever that may be, and draft one, as you just laid out, at number nine. Maybe it's Kenny Pickett. Maybe it's Malik Willis. We don't know that quarterback specifically. But there's a lot of dominoes that could fall at position for the Broncos this offseason. It's looking like Rodgers might, may be a long shot. He might stay in Green Bay. He might hang him up. He might not come to Denver. So plan B, what would that be? Would that be Kirk Cousins? Would that be Jimmy Garoppolo? Would that be Carson Wentz? Would that be Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett? We don't have that answer, but there's a distinct possibility. You have Locke under contract for pennies. He has experience. He's already in your back pocket. You might use the top pick if you have conviction and you're assured enough and you're no doubt about it. You want that guy. You take that guy. And then maybe you sign, I don't know, uh, as a bridge quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, let's say, and you have all three of them come to camp and may the best man win. And even if the best man doesn't win, that man might get the start until you have the young quarterback ready. It's, it's just one of the many ways the Broncos could operate at quarterback. And as we've laid out, it's either, you know, buy a championship now by swinging for the fences with Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson, or whoever, or do it the harder way with the younger quarterback and have that fail safe Again, either Drew Locke or a, another guy as the backup. You mentioned Kirk Cousins. Zach, you published, <clears throat> pardon me, last night an article after the podcast um, that features a bold prediction of the Vikings dealing Kirk Cousins to the Broncos with instead of reading the article here live on the show. Tell everybody what this is about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my eyes rolled when I had to put bold prediction in quotes there, Chad, but it is the low-hanging fruit because of the obvious connection that the Athletics Shield Capadia, I don't know if I'm butchering his name or not, but that's the bold prediction there. He thinks the Broncos could make a play. And this is assuming, by the way, that Aaron and Russ remain in Green Bay and Seattle this coming season. So this is plan C for the Broncos, and that's Captain Kirk. Uh, he could be had for a second-round pick contingent on Minnesota agreeing to eat some of or most of the $45 million cap figure that Cousins has in 2022, the final year of his current contract. He's only making that case for two reasons mostly. It's the need, obviously, at the position. The Broncos annually are in the quarterback carousel. And also the familiarity with having George Payton coming from Minnesota, now Clint Kubiak coming from Minnesota. Who better to coach uh, you know, Kirk Cousins than his former OC with the Vikings? So, again, low-hanging fruit, and even uh, Capadia's athletic cohort, Chad Graff, thinks the probability of a trade for Kirk Cousins is 25%. Kevin O'Connell was introduced today as the new Vikings head coach, and he even said, I'm excited to coach Kirk Cousins. They uh, overlapped in Washington. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think George Payton would take on a $35 million base salary for a one-year rental when, what, that, when that one-year rental is not Aaron Rodgers. So it was fun to write in the sense, I don't think all that realistic. Don't worry, guys. 
It's also important to remember that he's no spring chicken, Kirk Cousins. Turns 34. He's entering his third, age 34 season. But he had a year. I mean, 4,200 passing yards last season, 33 tutties to seven picks under the wing of Clint Kubiak, uh, earning, as you write here, Zach, his third Pro Bowl selection. And he finished, according to Football Outsider Metrics, as the league's seventh most effective signal caller. So, you know, it's an option, but uh, I don't know why you'd uh, take the job with a with a known commodity at quarterback, especially one that you know that you've coached before, um, and then only to trade him away. Real quick, let's grab a legendary wow. figure. Casey. Thank top you. roping it tonight. Wow. After gracing us, helping us create content last night with a superstar segment, Casey Nickel. Wow, thank you, bro. It was a pleasure getting to chat with you, getting to know you a little bit last night, and the uh, community dug it. Tons of positive feedback Zach and I got. So yeah, thank appreciate you. you. We'll uh, we'll get you back on in the near future. He says, Zach, hypothetically, Denver sticks with Locke because they have to. Everyone needs to realize this is the type of coaching staff to unlock Locke. The coach speak is needed just in case they don't get Rodgers and – Encourage their quarterback. <laughs> not forget his birthday. Not forget his birthday. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. Hey, nothing you said there is untrue, my friend, and appreciate the support. Hey, I mean, look what Joe Burrow did. I know he's a really uh, unicorn himself in a way, Chad, but what Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan did for his development was just the perfect kind of coaching that he needed. And I think uh, George Payton realized that no matter if they have Drew Locke or if it's Kenny Pickett or another young quarterback in the draft or any quarterback, they need an environment where that quarterback feels comfortable, feels warranted, feels wanted, and feel like they can blossom no matter their skill skill set. So it's important. Even if Locke doesn't end up starting, at least for as long as he's under contract in Denver, there's finally a coaching staff that's on his side. That's a big deal. Yes, it is. Travis Weber, big T in the house. Great to see you, my friend. He says, I know Rogers is the goal, but if it is Locke and despite all the opportunities and everyone ready to move on, I'd like to see him get a shot with the coaches looking to work with him. I do too. There's a part of me, I mean, as I've said on this show many times, you know, in a perfect world, if you can get Aaron Rodgers here, even at the cost of your premium round picks for the next two years, you do that. If there's a shot in Hades, you do that. Barring that, I'm not yet convinced there's an upgrade over Drew in this quarterback class in the draft. So, hey, you know, let's see how good of a coach Nathaniel Hackett is. Let's see how good Justin Outen is. Let's see how good Clint Kubiak is. And what's the worst case scenario? He's in a contract year. You're not going to go into the season only with Drew. Broncos will either draft someone or go. Um, I think it's a virtual lock. They'll draft somebody this year. Where in the draft is open for debate, but they'll sign a, a stopgap just in case Locke falls flat on his face. It's the honeymoon year for Nathaniel Hackett. You got to see the final last vestiges of Drew. You can close the book on that and really launch full th- Full on Zach into the 2023 quarterback class, which features a few more, you know, um, more dynamic quarterbacks, etc. I'm not, hey, dude, there's a part of me that really would like to see that happen for Drew. Now, I was just thinking the worst case scenario is that is we're on this carousel, we're on this ride, this roller coaster for a yet another year. And this time next year, we'll be podcasting about who the Broncos should draft in 2023 and, and try to end the cycle then. I just, one way or the other, I hope it comes to an end. I know Broncos country does feel the same way. That's why so many people want Aaron Rodgers and are willing to kick the can down the road because they just want an instant solution to a problem that's been gnawing at the team for the last more than a half decade now. So one way or the other, I hope it's resolved soon. Time will soon tell. GLP, Gary Lee's Palmer. Appreciate you, bro. The more I see of the new coaching staff, the more I like it. Couldn't say that before now. Denver Broncos for life. State of being indeed, my friend. Appreciate that. I mean, they're all saying the right things. You know, I'd like to see, <clears throat> pardon me. I'd like to see um, a little bit more from Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, his hello presser was just like a whirlwind of I mean, going from Vic Fangio to Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, you couldn't be more polar opposite just in terms of energy and, you know, how you present yourself publicly and all that stuff. I want to, I want to hear more from him, especially now, Zach, that he's been dug in for a month or so. Uh, I want to hear more 
from Nathaniel Hackett, but we probably won't get much of a chance to until the combine. We'll get a chance to talk with Nathaniel Hackett. Michael Ronquillo, appreciate you, my friend. Big love, big stars. You are the man. Love you. Yeah, thank you, Michael, so much. You are a tremendous supporter of the show, and uh, every single day you make your presence felt, so we definitely appreciate that. I want to see the introductory, you know, coordinators pressers already, Chad. I mean, they've been talking about, I know they couldn't hire him until after the Super Bowl, but I want to, I want to talk to, and I want to hear from Justin Out, and I want to talk to uh, a lot, uh, Ajiro. I'm going to say Elijah. I keep saying Elijah Evero. I don't know why. I want to talk to, you know, Evero. I want to hear what Stukes has to say. I want to know what makes them different from their predecessors, uh, in Pat Shermer, Tom McMahon, and Ned Donatello, and Vic Fangio. So hopefully we get that fairly soon. T twice again saying really excited to see this year's rookie class in year two. Peyton had an excellent draft. Hope we see a repeat in April. I think we will. I think that's Peyton. You know, that's one of his strong suits is uh personnel baby. And he's not, he's very pragmatic. I think he's very black and white. It either makes sense or it doesn't. Whereas John uh, Elway being a former player, I think in many cases, one of the, th and this is not to absolve him of anything, guys, what I'm about to say, but I think in many cases he trusted his staff too much without really asserting himself into the process more to be as certain of a pick or an acquisition as possible. And I think he kind of went with his gut a few times where, you know, sometimes that serves you, um, certainly serves you on the field when you're playing, but in the process of personnel and player evaluation, I mean, I, I think it's better to hedge on a on a executive Zach that takes a more black and white pragmatic approach, um, much more of a detail oriented uh, type of guy. And so I don't worry that George Payton is is going to bring home another good draft class. But, uh, hey, what's your solution to quarterback? You hit up the nail on the head, I think, when it comes to Elway. I was going to say that he trusts his uh, his heart and not his brain a little too often. He acted on impulse and emotion and not logic and thought. And that's when you're in charge of a multi-billion dollar franchise, you have to act on logic and reason, and you can't go on your first whim. That's what Elway's downfall was to an extent. And that's one of the strengths of George Payton as a GM. It's, he's, he's all business all the time. It's whatever is best for the Broncos, point blank period. He's not out for anyone but the team. He puts the team before himself and everybody else. That's how you have to be as a GM. So to this point, he's done nothing to warrant any loss of trust. He's made really good personnel moves. He's locked down the players that deserve to be locked down. And he had a great first draft class. I don't know how people are going to react if at number nine it takes a corner over a quarterback again, but we know that if he takes that corner, whoever it may be, for example, uh, they'll be a good player because it seems like he has a, a sharp eye for talent. So the Broncos are in good hands. A uh, comment here from Albert. I'm just getting this queued up so I can show everybody. He says, I read the uh, article of an opportunity to get some of the previous Bronco players back. Some of them I wouldn't mind getting back for the right money. Uh, big T, Travis Weber's wondering about this. So this was uh, an idea Luke had for content, and he lists five former star players for this team. The, the Broncos do have roster holes, and yes, these five stars, former stars anyway, could fill them. Um, let's jump to the cliff notes. He's got Matt Paradis listed here, Zach, who's coming off, uh, I don't know, solid, if unspectacular, somewhat injury-riddled uh, tenure in, in Carolina. Super Bowl 50 champion, Chris Harris. All right, everybody remembers Chris Harris, the corner. Uh, okay for the Chargers. Every game he appeared in, he started for them. And don't forget the Colorado kid, Philip Lindsay, who played for the Houston Texans and Miami Dolphins last year. Doubt it happens, similar to some of the energy that exists probably between Vaughn and George Payton uh, applies to Lindsay, even if the Broncos were interested. Isaiah McKenzie, and this is one, Zach, that's kind of stuck in your craw in particular over the years. You really mentioned him yeah. uh, multiple times as the one that kind of got away, the punt returner slash wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills, former Broncos fifth-round pick. So maybe he's the only guy on this list that you wouldn't say former star for the Broncos. And then last but not least, Malik Jackson of the Cleveland Browns, who signed a one-year deal after the Eagles cut him, and he had a pretty solid season for the Browns. So – of that list of uh, of dudes, Zach, any one of those guys or how many 
would you want us maybe investigate, kick the tires? Hey, what kind of money are you looking for? Let's see if we can't make a reunion. Well, the thing about McKenzie, I, I don't want to be hypocritical. I was advocating for his release simply because he couldn't catch a ball. He kept fumbling every single punt attempt he was on the field for. So I was not the biggest McKenzie fan back then. Six of them, six too many. But he shouldn't have been in that position, and that goes to coaching and, and this and that. The Buffalo Bills found a way to use a real game-changing talent. He doesn't really have one position. He's like a Swiss Army knife. He's taking handoffs. He's catching bubble screens. He's running routes. You get the ball in, the, in his hands, and good things will happen. I, I like that type of player. The, the Broncos never utilize a type of player. They have Jerry Judy running 100 fake jet sweeps a game. That's not <laughs> what Buffalo has done with McKenzie. So I would like him back. I don't know if he'd come back or what the Broncos would offer. Uh, I don't see uh, Philip Lindsay coming back. I, I certainly don't see Chris Harris Jr. coming back. I don't want Matt Paradis. Malik Jackson is interesting. I feel like he has maybe a couple years of decent, uh, maybe upper, upper, Upper level play, I can't talk tonight, but is he going to want too much money? Is he going to take snaps and reps away from Draymond Jones and uh, the other players? That's something that you have to weigh as well. By the way, according to Luke's um, research on McKenzie, let me just read this and then we'll grab Andrew Baker. In his four seasons as a Bill, McKenzie played in 53 games with a combined <clears throat> 76 returns, only one of which he returned to the house. And four fumbles. So six in the one season in Denver, four in Buffalo since, but spread Zach over four seasons. So that those are numbers you can live with, right? Just for what it's worth. Um, Andrew Baker, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate you. What are your thoughts? Uh, what's our thoughts on Gordon, Melvin Gordon? I personally want him back, especially for the one-two punch, but a main piece of Nathaniel Hackett's offense. But hey, Pookie is the future starter. Hashtag MHH for life. Well, as we mentioned last night, Andrew, Gordon was on the Colin Cowherd show, and he said, you know, he's been talking and will continue to talk to the Broncos about the possibility of returning, but he's not at a point in his career where he wants to take a back seat to anybody. So how he op ultimately chooses to prioritize and balance money versus role will, will probably determine where he lands this year. I think it's pretty – it would be a pretty safe assumption. Well, I don't know. I mean – Gordon's probably, at least on the surface, Zach, a more intuitive fit for the wide zone that Hackett's going to – I mean, he's got great vision on that front. If you if you want to pick a nit on Javante Williams last year, it was sometimes you're, you're screaming at the TV saying, dude, cut it back, right? Missing things like that, holes and just vision that from the time you get the handoff and that second split seconds to a second later, having the vision and knowing where to go with the ball. What's fortunate for Javante, Zach, is – it doesn't always matter if he sees and hits the hole because he's going to run dudes over. But at a certain point, you know, you are limited by that. So I don't know what's uh, what I like to see Gordon back. Yeah, but definitely at a fraction of the cost he uh, incurred in Denver the last two years. Yeah, I agree 100%. I, I don't know how limited you'd be, though. I mean, look what in Green Bay, for example, where Hackett and Outen came from. You had Aaron Jones, yeah, but you had A.J. Dillon, who's more of, a, of an inside runner and not really conducive to the scheme uh, than Javante Williams would be, and they made plenty of hay with that one-two punch. Now, do you need Melvin Gordon? That's my thing. I mean, he, he played good last year. I, I felt like he held it down uh, in, in a contract year, but he also fumbled a lot. I mean, he just does in crucial situations, and he was never that great running back. I never really came out of a game saying, oh, my God, the Broncos have to pay Melvin Gordon $8 million. He has to be the no-doubt starter. He should for sure start over Javante Williams. That was me personally. So if he wants to eat some of his money from last year, maybe take four or five, and the Broncos are okay with it, fine. But I don't think he's a player they have to have. Just my opinion. Wyatt, appreciate you, my friend. If Rodgers and Wilson fall through, Locke will be the quarterback with a serviceable, uh, serviceable veteran backup if he is a bust, meaning you go get the backup in case Drew busts on you. Um, for, the stars are pointing that way, my friend, and uh, I will, am not going to be surprised if that ultimately is, is what the Broncos do. Uh, Jacob Foster, appreciate you, my friend. Great to see you in the chat. I see one, Scott, at 640 on Twitch from Savage Boy Kev for what it's worth. Zach, 
Yeah, I just wanted to ask, what's who would serviceable, serviceable be? Like, what quarterback would that be? That's what I want to know. I feel like if you go out and trade for Carson Wentz, let's say, or Kirk Cousins, God forbid, Jimmy Garoppolo, they're going to more than likely be the day one starter. What serviceable quarterback could you bring in that's an upgrade on Bridgewater but not good enough to beat out Drew in that situation? And even that, do you want that situation again? Would you not feel comfortable having a high-profile rookie behind Drew Locke or an aforementioned veteran that has more, I'd say, starting capabilities right now than number three? Well, before we grab Savage Boy, well, let's just grab Savage Boy and then I'll pull up this. We'll take a quick look at the class, the free agent class. He says on Twitch, with what we saw last game with Drew's legs, he can be really deadly if he incorporates the scrambles to his game. Doesn't this kid kind of remind you of when Josh Allen was in his second year and incorporated running the ball? I mean, not really. The only thing I think those two guys have in common is relative arm strength, and Allen's got him beat on that front. And Drew's got a strong arm. I mean, Allen has the biggest arm, in my opinion, in the league. Does he have the most arm talent, per se? I mean, take that up with Patrick Mahomes or – Aaron Rodgers, but in terms of throwing marshmallows through battleships, I don't think anybody can do that like Josh Allen. Drew Locke has a very, very, very strong arm, but it's not on that same level. And they were both relatively raw coming out of college. They needed refinement, development, time on task. Josh Allen got it with the full faith and support of a, of a coaching staff and was fortunate in his second year to turn the corner. Was it year two he turned the corner? Because he was class of 18. I'm trying to remember the exact timeline on Allen, but it uh, might have been a third-year turnaround. But either way, that's the best-case possible scenario, like unicorn, oh, my gosh, we just won the lottery, with Drew Locke scenario even hinting or approaching what happened with Josh Allen and Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, Drew Locke is the great value Josh Allen. They're not even built the same. Drew's like 6'3", what, 220? Josh Allen's 6'6", 250. The guy's like a linebacker playing quarterback. And, uh, yeah, you can talk about the inconsistencies and the arm strength and being raw quarterbacks at one time for Allen. That's where the similarities, I think, stop. And I'm a big Drew guy, but those strengths – uh, they didn't have it under Pat Shermer and Vic Fangio. We hope they have it under Nathaniel Hackett and Justin Allen. If they hit on those coaches, then the best could be yet to come for Drew, but we do not know yet. Uh, for what it's worth, 6'5", 237. Dude, that's a guy that's only you know a few LBs from blocking someone's blind side, right? This cat, he's a big man. He's a big man. Reminds me of Cam Newton in that sense, and you see it in how much – uh, power the Bills have run at court QB power plays since they kind of figured out how to unlock Josh Allen. But real quick here, Zach, here's a list of the unrestricted free agent class. Close the tab already. <laughs> ben Roethlisberger, Void, Andy Dalton, Void. Uh, well, let's just run through it. Big Ben is retired. So that puts, according to the rankings based on uh, previous contracts, Teddy Bridgewater as two. Fitzpatrick, Andy Dalton, Cam Newton, miss me. Jameis Winston, maybe. Terod mm -hmm. Taylor, maybe. Mm -hmm. But not as a solution. These are these are fail safes, guys. This is strictly through the lens. There is not a name on this list, with maybe the exception of Winston, Zach, in my opinion, that presents a plausible grain of upside to actually be this team's solution at quarterback moving forward. And even that, I have many, 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 many doubts. Kobe Brissett, Mariota, Trubisky, I mean, Gabbert, Henny. Look at all this list, this cast of characters. This is what happens, guys, because NFL teams, Zach, when they find a franchise quarterback, turns out they don't let him go with very few exceptions. Peyton Manning, you know, New England, and those were both very extenuating, weird circumstances being the exceptions. The problem is there's so many former Broncos on that list, Chad. My God. Jeff Driscoll, Trevor Simeon, Teddy Bridgewater. Brandon I mean, Allen. That list actually made me, Flacco. It made me depressed, honestly. Uh, someone says... Mitch Trubisky, but I think he's going to go to uh, New York and back up Daniel Jones and follow Brian Dayball there. Mariota, because he's a dual threat and he has somewhat of upside left in his body, I can maybe, I, but again, if you want to go that route, you're hinging on Drew Locke winning the starting job because if you're putting the season into Tarod Taylor's hands or Chase Daniels' hands, someone like that, you're not going to have a good time. 
Ed Keating, what's up, big dog? Thank you for the super chat. He says, if Locke does get another chance and balls out, what do we do? Love to come back on the show, getting ready to move back to St. Louis. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we'll definitely be in touch on uh, having you back on the show. That's for sure. We're getting things lined out. So I'll be in touch with you, big dog. But what do we do if Locke gets another chance and balls out? You find a way to keep him around. But you hedge a little bit because there's that mystic, um, magical effect that a contract year tends to have on players. I mean, look no further than Shelby Harris, right? Um so you got to you got to be aware of that. You got to factor that in. It's not always easy to factor that in for NFL teams because when it comes to free agency, uh you're you're vying with what the market also thinks of this kid. And so worst case scenario if he balls out though, you can franchise tag him. But in reality, George Payton probably puts together a deal to keep you know, come back on 3 years and we'll guarantee basically the first two. But guys, that is so many turns down the road. Yeah. Like it, we can't even really, we can't even really uh, countenance that at this point because he's so far from that being even close to a reality. Yeah, I don't think uh, they're going to have to worry about extending Drew. But you know, you mentioned a contract year. It's a make or break year in a lot of ways for Drew Locke because how many more chances is he going to get if he does get the chance to show that he could start maybe not for the Broncos, but on any other NFL team. He's really at a crossroads in his career. Some of that is of his own doing. Some of that is of the Broncos doing. He hasn't gotten a totally fair shake. If he gets one more uh, swing at the plate, he has to make the most of it. So that should also benefit the Broncos knowing if he does start and if this coaching staff is as good as we think they are, they're going to get maybe Drew Locke's best effort and that best might be good enough. Do I see big A, little a, R-O-N? Aaron Lynch in this, uh, dude, Aaron, I sent you an email. I need your address, bro. I I've had a care package and, uh, waiting for you, but I need your shipping address. And I think your t-shirt size too. So check your email. I emailed you from the mile high huddle email address. He says, Hey fellas. And thank you for the super chat, bro. I'm not making any bold predictions says Aaron, but this feels like the first positive repositioning since super bowl 50. I can't see a young, talented team not rallying behind Hackett and his boys. Cheers. Hey, dude, I don't care if they want to call it wishful thinking. You got to believe it can happen. You got to believe it's going to happen before it can happen. And so, yeah, you got to believe. You got to believe. And again, if you, if, if Nathaniel Hackett was the right coach for this team, by virtue of him being hired, it's a – Drew Locke can upgrade over the previous version of Drew Locke. Now, to what extent? And and can you hang your hat on that? No way to know. But if this team goes out, Aaron, and lands Aaron Rodgers, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a force to be reckoned with. I'm a believer. I'm a believer for sure. Because when you have the Kansas City Chiefs winning a Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years, when you have the Bengals going to the Super Bowl for the first time since 88, was it 89, whatever, Things can happen season, but yes, th- things can happen really fast and a quick turnaround at this level. It's no more three year rebuilds and, and all this time you can make it happen in a single year. And I think the Broncos were on the precipice as it was last year with the roster, except for the coaching, except for the quarterbacking and this and that they had, I think a playoff caliber roster, any quarterback along with an upgrade in coaching, I think it's going to be able to push the Broncos over the edge. They may not be in a Super Bowl or win a Super Bowl in 2022, but I think they're going to end the playoff list streak and Nathaniel Hackett from year one will endear himself to Broncos country as finally a worthy successor to Gary Kubiak. Gerald Hill in the house. Great to have you with us, my friend. Thank you. He says, I'm liking the coaching staff. We should see how good they are. Uh, rock with lock, let George do his thing in free agency and draft. Rodgers couldn't do it in Green Bay. What makes it happen here? Well, we've talked about this before, Gerald, but I mean, a change of scenery oftentimes can kind of reinvigor, you know, spark something for these long beard, gray beard quarterbacks that are, you know, angling for the Hall of Fame someday. Peyton Manning, look, the Colts were a guaranteed. Uh, playoff berth anytime Peyton Manning was their starting quarterback but you know he only got him over the hump one time like all the way over the hump once 
comes to Denver and I mean, two Super Bowls in four years, another MVP breaking records, um, wins a Super Bowl. It was like microwaving his previous decade in the NFL. He was in Indy for what it's worth for 14 years, the level at which he produced. And he did a lot of great things. Star Wars numbers, right? In Indy. I mean, he broke Dan Marino's passing touchdown record in 04. Was it 03 or 04? The, the single season record for 20 some odd years was 48 tutties held by Dan Marino. He broke it. I mean, he was won four MVPs for the Colts. And you think, I mean, how much better can it get? Then he comes to Denver. Something about that change your play things, your play places, your playmates, come to a classy organization with high, um, you know, expectation. The collection of talent on this team compliments Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that's not even something I would I would worry about, Zach. Not one whit. I mean, so are we to assume that he never won another Super Bowl in Green Bay and that was solely his fault? It's every NFC title game loss is solely Aaron Rodgers' fault? I don't think so. The coaching has gone into that. Uh, the defense has gone into that. They didn't really show up at all against the, the 49ers this past playoff round. So it wasn't just Aaron, but you put him on the Broncos, instantly they're a playoff team, and from there you never know what could happen. He would have a renewed sense of vigor, a renewed sense of purpose, a renewed – being in a different conference, not even a different jersey, just a whole different level set of goals and uh, achievements he could strive for in Denver. So I would happily take that on. F them picks, just as the Rams did. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, okay, let's grab this here uh, from Trevor. He says, um, Zach, if they draft a quarterback this year, would that mean they're moving forward with him instead of Locke? The reason I'm asking is last year I remember we were saying that if the Broncos drafted a quarterback, it would essentially be them saying we're moving on from Drew. Wondering if it still would mean the same thing. Thanks, guys. Zach? It depends where they draft the quarterback, you know, what quarterback that is. If you take Malik Willis at number nine, let's say, yeah, it doesn't really sound great for Locke's prospects one way or the other. Kind of like Jimmy G last year with Trey Lance. Even though Lance was on the bench, Jimmy knew the writing was on the wall. There's a reason this guy was a first-round pick. He's coming for my job. Might, might not be tomorrow, but it's happening at some time. So he wouldn't send the best me message to Locke, but if they would be patient with that young quarterback and – pledge a red shirt year in 22 to develop that young guy Locke would have all the motivation just like Jimmy did last year to go out and perform and prove that he belongs as well there's a fine line you have to walk in that scenario but if you walk at that finally good things can happen when a coaching staff first year drafts their own quarterback I mean it's a near guarantee of that current quarterbacks demise in that city they're they're on you know borrowed time Michael Ronquillo, for what it's worth, has now shattered the previous record for individual stars on a single MHH podcast. So hats off to Michael Ronquillo Thank you, for throwing it down. We appreciate you watching the morning show. We appreciate you watching Huddle Up and all of the MHH podcasts, my friend. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got to get you on the show one of these days. All right, I'll be reaching out to you. We'll, we'll talk about that. But thank you, my friend. Thank you very much, Corey H. Also, love you. We got to get you, you on the show, Corey. We've never yeah. had you on. Let's get you on the show. Reach out to me on Twitter, big dog. It's a no for me on Cousins, says Corey. I did have an interesting conversation today about fair value for Matt Ryan. If we don't get A Rod or Deshaun Watson, maybe the ninth pick straight up for Matt Ryan. Who above us would give a higher pick for Matt Ryan? I don't think even the Broncos would give up the number nine pick for Matt Ryan. Uh, I mean, I like Matt Ryan, but he's, uh, you know, he can, he, I don't really doubt that he could make some hay in Denver with this collection of talent around him, but he is uh, limited in terms of athleticism. He's long in the tooth. He was an 08, number one overall pick in 08, right, Scott? Wasn't it 08? Third overall pick, my bad. Um, but either way, number one pick in, the first round pick that is in 2008. He's getting long in the tooth. Seems to have kind of maxed out um, that Super Bowl against the Patriots was kind of his swan song, it felt like. And yet he keeps chopping wood. The dude keeps putting up the stats, but just not at a level where, you know, he can't carry the team when it has warts, when it has big holes on the roster and whatnot. So um, a first round pick, 
Mm -mm. Miss me on that. Now, if you could, what's his, Scott, you, you know this off the top of your head, what Matt Ryan's cap number is. Um, Too much. It's a lot. It's a lot. If you could find a way to make it fit, and depending on what the capital was that you had to give up to get him, but to me, a first-round pick for a Matt Ryan that's got to be in his mid-30s now, I'm not really down for that. Yeah, what an 08 draft that was. I think it was McFadden who went fourth, and I wanted my team at the time to draft, and they took Vernon Golston in the first round. Good times. Um, I don't know that I would do that for Matt Ryan. Maybe like five years ago after the Super Bowl choking incident, I, I wouldn't do it now for him. He's in his mid-30s, I believe. He's 36. not getting any younger. It reminds me too much of Joe Flacco. And I think Matt Ryan right now is a lot better than Flacco was in 2019, but there's not a lot of upside to Matt Ryan. And you'd be basically hoping to limp into the playoffs, not really smash into the playoffs like you would with Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson. Kirk Cousins, at least, is younger, and he was pretty efficient. I'm not the biggest fan of his salary. I know he's not the best quarterback in the NFL. I just feel like you'd be able to get the same amount of production out of Kirk Cousins, who's a little younger and I think can do a little more with the coaching staff. $40 million in dead cap, Zach. Holy smokes. Holy nope. smokes. No way. Um, I'm not, like I said, I, I wouldn't rule it out. I'm not like anti-Matt. Matty Ice. But uh, it'd, have, it'd have to really be favoring the Broncos in more ways than one. Jacob, appreciate you, my friend. Throwing down like a boss. Uh, Zach, we are at 47 minutes, coming up on 47 minutes. So we got to start kind of winding things down here. I'm going to jump in the chat here and see. Um, oi boy. Where's the oi boy? Josh. Where is uh, my fellow... Brother in punk rock. I'm scrolling. Hold on. I'm getting to you, Josh. Stand by. There he is. Bro. Top rope super chat. Thank this you. Is how, this is how you uh, telegraph your entrance into a chat with authority. Thank you, my friend. Rocking a Ramon shirt in his profile pic. This is how you know this guy at Hall of Fame. All right. Hall of Fame. He says, Oi, Priest, just want to send some love to my favorite pod for all things orange and blue. As much as I'd like to see solid talent under center in Rodgers or Russ Wilson, I have strong feelings we will see Drew and another filler at quarterback. Hashtag lock and load. Hashtag let them hate. Yes, yeah, sir. Josh, love you, bro. Thank you so much. Very generous of you, my friend. Great to have you back in the chat contributing to the conversation. Big dog. Yeah, thank you so much, and uh, it, it's looking like it could very well be that. If you strike out on Aaron or Russell Wilson and you don't want to splurge a first-rounder on Matt Ryan or Kirk Cousins, it might be worth it and more prudence and more plausible. You mentioned pragmatic. That's a good word as well. To roll with Drew, who's making pennies on the dollar compared to someone like Matt Ryan, a young guy with upside left. You hired a coaching staff that can play into his abilities. Again, maybe not Aaron, but it could be a lot worse. Big A, little a, R-O-N, super chat number two tonight. If we don't land Rodgers or Wilson, we have to roll with Locke. Another journeyman might bring more wins, but will not be enough for a, a run, to make a run. I just don't want another year with a question behind Locke's name. Love you, MHH fam. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. Um, I don't know, man. Look, Drew Locke, there's, he's still very much, in my opinion, a ball of, of clay that if you get the right artiste, get the right sculptor, you get uh, Michelangelo in there, hey, you know, you're getting a statue of David, perhaps. And maybe, you know, that's a bridge too far comparing Nathaniel Hackett to uh, one of the great uh, masters. But still, he's a ball of clay. I still, I don't think he's been ruined. All right, I don't think he's been ruined. Um, he's been perhaps a little traumatized. It'll be good for him to feel like a team has, you know, a coach, coaches, multiple, more than one, you know, has his back as to use Nathaniel Hackett's verbiage. Uh, and from there, you don't know what the limits of that could be because he is a very talented kid. But who can help him put it together between these ears? That's the biggest thing for Drew is the between the ears stuff. He's never, uh, you know, tools and traits has never really been his problem. It's intangible stuff between the ears. 
Yeah, the Broncos had a Donatello in the building last year. Maybe a Michelangelo in the building this year can be what Drew Locke needs. You know, we have to hope for the best. We have to hope not only that Locke still has talent that can be unlocked figuratively and literally, but that the coaching staff, we think they're great. We think they're going to be massive upgrades, but I want to see it in action. Otherwise, it's all pointless. It's a merit-based business, Chad, a production-based business. That applies even in a honeymoon season to Nathaniel Hackett. Well said. And Michael, you are just throwing down, big dog. I'm going to shoot you a text later tonight, so look for that. Uh, get back to me tomorrow, maybe, but we'll uh, we'll pick a Wednesday to get you on the show, okay? Wyatt, I'm excited to see what Hackett and Outen can do with Locke and very excited to see what they can do with Noah Fant and Albert Okwebunam. Hope they can tap into their potential, especially since Outen was a tight ends coach. Yeah, same here, man. I think all things become possible when you get the quarterback going. You know, that truly is – I hate to dump another cliche on you, but – that's the tide that raises all ships, including the tight end. Get the quarterback. Yeah, I want to see the new tight ends coach, uh, Jake Moreland, uh, do some work with them. I, Wade Harmon, by all accounts, he was a great guy, and he battled um, very quietly. He battled cancer during his time with the team last year. Um, but he didn't really, to me, do all that much for the development of Noah Fan and Alberto. I think like, they could have taken a couple steps further so maybe Jake Moreland can get the most out of them, along with uh, Justin Elton. Uh, Dave Millage saying, hey, I'm happy to take my first jump into the chat. Listening up north of the border, I assume that's uh, north of the 49th parallel, and enjoying the brainstorm. Excited for our new coach. Keep up the great work, Chad and Zach, and all in MHH. Appreciate Thanks, Dave. that, buddy. And Rodney, have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. But I'm seeing one uh, from Andrew Baker. I'm seeing one from a legend named Kayaka that we got to get to, and then we got to go. Andrew says, man, love this pod and community. Can't wait for all the superstar segments, but Michael Ronquillo definitely deserves the next one. He's he's going to be on the show. I think I have one booked for the next one, but he will be on the show, trust. Uh, and so will you one of these days. All right, let's get that figured out too, Andrew. Kayaka has been on the show, but it wasn't a superstar segment per se, right? This was the, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, the live show. <laughs> the gut reaction in which we Good were uh, battling – stadium staff trying to keep our position in the not really but Kayaka was there and uh we sat Almost. Him down <laughs> and uh you know so this would be number two but Kayaka we got to get you back on the show dude yeah you and I need to talk again too about other things uh appreciate you my friend Travis you have a great weekend um the CV though got Kayaka yikes I I uh dealt with that in January my friend no fun Resigning Kenny Young, is it more possible now, Zach, with uh, Evero officially I'd, being the DC? That's a possibility. I mean, first of all, Kayaka, I hope you're feeling better. I've been a little under the weather, too. I don't know if it's CV, but it's a tough time right now, and we uh, we know we both know it'll be better. Um, Kenny Young deserves consideration, but I feel like there's not that much momentum internally for his uh, retention. They have Jewel in free agency. They have Alexander Johnson. I feel like if there's one guy they're going to bring back, it could be AJ, considering he was, I think, overall the highest-graded linebacker among the three. But it, it helps having Evero here now, and uh, Kenny Young gave them something the Broncos haven't had in quite a while, which was pretty fun to watch, and that's speed and athleticism in inside linebacker. Silent one. Hey, dude, appreciate the uh, kind words, my friend. Appreciate that. You know, we uh, it's it's not out of thin air, right? The 500 people in the chat on a live stream on a Thursday in the off season. You know, this is a this is wood we've been stacking on the fire for almost 10 years. Now, the live streams that's it's been about what Zach is this our third? This is 19, 20, 21. Yeah. No, no, no. 20, 20, 20, no, 19, 20, 21. This is our fourth year doing them as live streams, our podcast. But anyway, um, and so, you know, the, the cool thing is if you build it, they will come, right? If you're, if you stay consistent, you do your thing, you're going to get better through repetitions. And this is a message to anybody out there that has aspirations of doing anything, let alone something like what we do. The people ask for our advice on those type of things. And the first thing I tell them is, just get started. Just start because you'll get better uh, as you go. And long story short, as I ramble here, what I'm saying is, you know, when we got started, 
I remember we got a thousand subs and we're like, yo, you know, we're, we can get into the partner program. This is rad. And then in the matter of two years, you know, we, we leapfrog to what are we at? We're approaching 14,000 subs. Yeah. So we're very blessed. We're very lucky. Yeah. Uh, we, we provide the content. You guys help us provide the conversation. You help keep the lights on. So silent one. Thank you, big dog. Appreciate you. And we've also taken very constructive criticism. I mean, when we started out, Chad, do you remember that we were this close oh, yeah, to the this screen view. and just this like view. pissing, yeah, pissing off everyone? So it's definitely a process, and you get better the more you do something. I mean, that's with anything in life. But the only reason we are able to do this because of you, Silent One, and everybody else, every single person making up that 432 right now, the numbers that we have, we're so appreciative and so grateful. We do this for, for you guys. We try giving back, and we feel like it's very deserved. We have the best audience and the best job, quite frankly. No doubt. No doubt. I count my blessings. This is no lie. Every single day. But, guys, we got to dip. We got to go. It's time for us to say goodnight. Robot of Doom uh, over in Twitch. Get an alert box. I don't know what that means. I guess I need to get my uh, gaming teenagers on on uh, on the payroll and teach me about Twitch. I don't know. We created the account. Their 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 uh, requirements are really weird, dude. Um, unless you're going to set on Twitch for like eight hours a day streaming video games, it's pretty tough. But hey, we're we're chopping, we're chipping away at it, Zach. But uh, yeah, do your thing, and I'll I'll grab the shoutouts. Well, I just want to address Trevor here. Do you guys know if you're going to have multiple meet and greets this year? I missed it last year. We really like to make one. I really enjoy the pods. All you guys do a good job. Appreciate you, Trevor. Yeah, chat. we have something brewing for the draft. We want to do something then. We're going to definitely have something at Empower Field this coming season. So, yeah, Trevor, uh, we're going to try to expand it now that we have some knowledge of the ins and outs and the logistics of it. It's not the easiest thing to plan, and I give Chad a ton of credit for what he did last year. Um, but we're going to do it bigger this coming season. We hope to see you out there. Trust. That was the Huddle Up Pod, though, guys. Thank you all for tuning in with us tonight. We are off through the weekend until Sunday night, but follow us on Twitter at Huddle Up Pod. Follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. You can follow Chad on Twitter at Chad and Jensen. You can follow myself at Kelberman NFL. Follow Scott on Twitter at Scout Kennedy. If you haven't, if you would like a comfortable hat like Chad and I are both rocking or a mug or a beanie or anything else, huddleuppod.com, your one-stop shop for MHH gear. And facebook.com slash Huddle. hit that big blue button, become a supporter. We have three exclusive shows scheduled to take place this weekend. Kelberman's Corner, Broncos Book Club, and Trickle Zone. Five bucks a month, worth every penny, I promise you that. And facebook.com slash Pod. like that page and follow that page. Guys, if you haven't, go to Apple Podcasts and please leave your football priest a five-star review for a chance to win. Could be a hat, could be a shirt, could be something really special each and every month. But if you can't do those things, please do these three things. Subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. Helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans just like you. Shout out to our great Super Chat superstars tonight. The Bugmeister, Sam Bam, Casey Nickel, Ed Keating, Aaron Lynch, Gerald Hill, Corey H., Josh the Oi Boy, and Kayaka. Much love and respect on Facebook. Michael Ronquillo set the new uh, the new PB, the new record. He's number one tonight. Jacob Foster, number two. Travis Weber, Andrew Baker, GLP, T twice, Rodney Garcia, Andrew Lampy, and Wyatt Horning. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Appreciate you. Uh, as Zach mentioned, we'll see you for the premium VIP pods this weekend. Can't wait. And uh, we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. And as always... Go Broncos.